Hey everyone, Joe here. So I screwed up the last recording. Sorry about that. I lost about half of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, we were talking about making the terrain system suitable for displaying in scenes outside of the battle and cleaning up things so that uh, it was just a more robust and reliable system for use in the future. The main thing I talked about there was making it so that chunks could be generated dynamically, however many I wanted, whether it was, you know, no chunks around the main combat area or multiple rings of chunks, you know, way out into the distance so that we can get that nice distant terrain so that the, the terrain feels real, like you're in a real place. Rendering one ring around the central chunk is like adding eight and adding another ring around that is even more. Uh, I don't know how many it is, but maybe close to double that. Every ring gets bigger and bigger and is more and more chunks to where just adding one ring would add like, you know, 40, 50, 100 chunks. The terrain didn't have what's called a level of detail system. The center chunk where all the combat takes place is rendered at full resolution because, well, it's the main chunk, it's where all the action is happening. But then these outer chunks that are just supposed to give you a vague sense that there's more terrain in the distance. Each of those chunks took the same amount of rendering power as the main chunk where all the action took place. To render terrain, you know, a few kilometers or miles out, it would be just as expensive to just have, you know, one little mountain in the distance uh, as it would be to have, you know, the whole combat area, the whole main play area, both on the rendering side and on the terrain generation side. Every single vertex in the mesh gets generated at the same level of detail for the entire map, even kilometers outside. That obviously isn't going to work. I needed, in addition to being able to generate chunks farther and farther away, I needed a way for those chunks to get lower and lower resolution, lower level of detail in each ring. It turned out it wasn't that hard to adjust the existing code to do that, but I did actually have to do it. So if we've got the main central terrain chunk here, I'll turn the, um, the selection wire on here so you can see that. And you can see this is sort of the, the level of detail, the resolution of the terrain. You know, every, every 10 foot or 10 meter square there is, is two triangles and there's a lot of those. Um, in fact, if we look at the mesh data here, you can see that there's 66,000 uh, vertices and 131,000 triangles. So that's a lot of triangles. It's a lot of vertices. It's a lot of data. If each chunk had to be this expensive, the farther out we render, the worse performance gets. And we want to avoid that. I currently don't drop level of detail for the ring directly around the center chunk. That's because the camera is going to be pretty close to the edge fairly frequently and I just didn't want to deal with an obvious sudden quality loss that close to where the camera would be. So the level of detail doesn't start lowering until the next ring out. So if we look over there, here we go. You can see that these chunks that are next door are rendered at, so it's half, half of the quality on each edge, but because it's half squared, it ends up being a quarter uh, of the amount of detail. So you can sort of see that um, for each four squares at the full level of detail, the next level of detail down has a single square. This is a sort of powers of two sort of system where let's say we had um, 256 squares by 256 squares was the uh, the size of the central chunk. And I think that's what it is right now. That would mean that the next level of detail down would be 128 squares by 128 squares. And that's gonna be a quarter as many squares. Um, and then if we go yet another level of detail out, there's even, even less detail and it's quartered again. So that would be like 64 squares by 64 squares. Um, and this just happens automatically. Let me turn the fog off here. Um, so the farther we, the farther we get out on the terrain, the more sort of pixelated it becomes. And you can see that a little bit here. Um, the, the terrain sort of looks lower detail, more pixelated. And then if we go all the way into the center, um, you don't get, you don't get quite that, that same effect. Now the camera isn't going to be out this far most of the time. Um, or really any of the time. So having it be that low level of detail is fine because if we turn all the fog and stuff back on, 
um, you really can't tell that that distant terrain is significantly lower detail than the terrain that's right in front of you. Um, so that was the main idea behind the LOD system is every ring or so, uh, we cut the level of detail in half, uh, at least in one dimension, so it's quartered since it's two dimensions. That means that you know, a mountain in the uh, on, the, on the distant horizon um, is using not significantly more triangles like per pixel. Like if you can only see a few pixels of the mountain, it should really only be using a few triangles to render that mountain. And a mountain that's much closer, well, that can use you know lots of triangles to to render so that it's got you know it's more detailed. So another change that I had to make in order to support this was. The central chunk originally wasn't 256 squares um, by 256 squares, it was 250. And the reason for that is that the original meshes that I put together were capped at 65,000 or so uh, triangles. So that's like a six, uh, the maximum of a 16-bit number for a 16-bit mesh. And I didn't realize at the time, or maybe even back when I was building it, I don't even know if Unity supported it at the time, but now Unity supports 32-bit um, meshes, and 32-bit meshes can be much, much bigger um, in the you know in the billions I think of vertices. So definitely no longer limited by 65,000, and that's good because if I wanted to have a level of detail system where the level of detail would cut in half every time, you need to use powers of two for that to make sense. I didn't want to significantly shrink the size of the central chunk. I didn't want to change any of that. So I really wanted it to be really close. So going from 250 to 256 made a lot of sense. And with the new 32-bit mesh format, which was pretty easy to do, I think it was just a few lines of code, uh, I was able to change the chunk generation to be 256 pixels, or not pixels, 256 squares. Um, at the full resolution, and then every level of detail would drop by half. So 256, 128, uh, 64, and theoretically can go all the way down to you know pretty pretty crazy low levels. If I say generate that 16 16 chunk radius again, this is going to take a little while. Okay, so we've got a new map here, and we'll turn off. Uh, but let's go all the way out to the edge, and you can see the farther out we get selection wire back on these get now this is the same size as before uh, the same you know uh, two and a half square kilometers but you can see the terrain is significantly less detailed and it's only using you know 289 uh, vertices so it's um, 512 triangles so it's it's very small in terms of the um, the amount of memory that it's taking up and um, how many triangles the GPU has to render, and importantly, how much uh, the terrain um, generation algorithm needs to generate. So instead of generating, uh, you know, something like you know 66,000 uh, unique points, it's now only generating 512, which is obviously quite a bit cheaper. Um, so switching the the mesh format to 32-bit from 16-bit um, allowed me to keep the nice um, the sort of descending powers of two um, that, that made that really easy to do. Anyway, those were the parts that were missing from the earlier recording that kind of got cut off. So I think I more or less covered uh, everything that got destroyed. Just a quick thank you to my channel members, General Goman Snana, Commissioned Officers Trig of Black Tiger, Ryan Grill, Esposito Adam, and NCOs ALX2079 and Lisa Parrott. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, supporting the game, and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, please go wishlist Infinimore. It really helps me out a lot. And as always, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video.